What's up? What's up? What's going on, guys? Uh, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Bitcoin's potential uh, descending broadening wedge. I want to look a little bit about like what that is, what the target would be. Um, I, ha I haven't watched too many videos um, lately about price action in Bitcoin, so I don't know if anyone's really talked about this. However, uh, it does seem to be kind of apparent here with uh, highs. Highs getting slightly lower and lows getting lower, obviously. This is on the four hour here. The one hour, well, the one hour chart actually really uh, shows it very nicely. On the daily, it's harder to pick out because we don't have, we only have about a week worth of data. This is all the way going back to June 26th. So a little more than a week, but these are kind of the patterns still, you see them on these on these higher time frames, the, the daily here. You can see the wicks extend down, but again, that's why the four and one hour are just better to look at those. So yeah, let's take a look at these here. If we switch to the four hour, uh, this is, and, and then I wanna go down to the one hour. If we switch to the four hour, you can see clearly, these are on the four hour, you can see these wicks clearly went above and just kind of found support back on the, the bottom of this channel here. You can see it happened back on June 27th. And again, very recently, just on June tw uh, 2nd and 1st, or July 2nd and 1st right here. So just a few days ago. So a descending broadening wedge, this is basically what the, the pattern looks like. It needs two touches at least on both sides. Do we have that? We have one touch here, one touch here, and then again, well, one touch here, one touch here, and then one touch here, and one touch here. So yeah, it does have the touches there. So we're gonna be looking for maybe a, let me get my drawing tool out. Uh, if anyone knows how to do like that perfect circle drawing tool, let me know. I would love to do that. I know Kevin Svensson uses that and I've looked through this entire thing a million times and I can't find it. Anyway, so right around here would be maybe the breakout area if we would get to this region right here, which is really only $300, $400 away from where we've been trading over the past few hours. So really not that big of a move. Um, so again, if Bitcoin would increase another 4 or 5%, that could be bullish and test this wedge and break out of it. That could be a very a bullish thing. Now, a lot of people are kind of bearish. I wanna get back to this kind of chart a little bit, but a lot of people are pretty bearish for the short term and they think we're gonna have a nice pullback. Um, if you guys have been watching my videos for a while, you know that I would like that opportunity um, to, to, to get into Bitcoin more and other cryptocurrencies as well. But Bitcoin in particular has just been killing absolutely everything else, meaning Bitcoin's been doing very well, and not necessarily everything else has been doing very well. Bitcoin dominance is at 62.5%, and you can see historically, uh, it hasn't been that high since the peak of the bull run in 2017. So a year and a half, almost two years, it's the highest Bitcoin has been in dominance. So Bitcoin has really taken a lot of momentum from the market, and altcoins, obviously people have, uh, I guess, gotten, not upset, but... Altcoins haven't been doing as well as Bitcoin. So people are, you know, regretting not putting more into Bitcoin. Um, I personally think altcoins are gonna have their time. I'm not worried about altcoins at all. We're talking about literally every coin besides Bitcoin. So am I worried that Bitcoin's going to go back to 100% dominance? No, of course not. 90%, I don't think it'll, it would get close to 90%. In fact, I think we're kind of near the top of Bitcoin's dominance um, and where it will kind of hold because i mean even back in the bull market of 2017 this is about where it topped out and we're about there right now i would be absolutely shocked if we went above 70 percent which we really haven't seen uh in years we haven't seen something like that in years um the last time we saw it above 70 percent was the very beginning of 2017 so about two and a half years actually at this point so i'm not really expecting that in this video as well i'm gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about litecoin because litecoin is in a kind of curious place here We'll take a look at that channel. Anyway, back to this and we'll get back to the descending broadening wedge. You can see those touches there and then here would be the confirmation. So at the top of that broadening wedge. So basically that's exactly what we're seeing here in my opinion, this is the four hour. And again, we get to the top of this broadening wedge which is only three or $400, a 5% move above where we're at right now. I think that would be very bullish, but we see we have a longer term resistance right around here, the 1140, uh, 11,455 area, I have that line. Um, if we zoom out, you can see that dates back to, yeah, if I put it on the daily, it'll be a little easier to see here. Um, these charts get all mushed up here. 
You can see though, those areas that we were trading back in the bear market of 2018. So that's the four hour and I wanna to switch to the one hour just to kinda of get a better picture of it. Cause you can see these wicks, uh, these are four hour candles. They don't give a ton of detail. If we switch to the one hour, you can see a lot more detail here. So you can see even on the one hour, we had these wicks only. These are only wicks, but for the most part, finding support right along this bottom, uh, bottom of this wedge right here. And let me just kind of, you know, it, it's not perfect, especially when you get on lower time frames, it gets more and more specific. But I mean, for the most part, I mean, you know what? I'll just put it back to what it was because it's basically the same. But uh, yeah, you can see these. Let not even an hour did they really stay below these even though they were kind of bouncing up and down. It was pretty volatile back here in the 27th, but for the most part held right here, ended up bouncing. And again, same thing, uh, down here wicked. And then this was very tight. This was uh, three days ago on the second here. I believe that's Tuesday, Tuesday the second. Yeah, Tuesday. And we had a nice candle all the way down, but that immediately went back up. So that's on the downside here. On the top of the channel, we don't see as many wicks, but we see a lot of resistance, a lot of strong resistance on the top of the broadening descending wedge here. But you can see, again, very clear. Now, I like the one hour because you can kind of get a really good picture of what was going on in these smaller time frames. Um, but again, four hour kind of gives you a nice mix of uh, daily and one hour. Um, so I think four hour, and even maybe if there was a, is there a five or six hour? Not, I could do a custom one, but. Basically, that would give an, like the perfect mixture of, I think personally, like a, a good idea of what's going on in daily, but also very, very small time frames there. So with this descending wedge, again, I think right around here, uh, I mean, even if we drew this in, this would be a very critical, in my opinion, area right here. So this is kind of a long term trend. That's what this this line, this lighter bluish line represents here. You can see again here we've kind of been bouncing off finding support and resistance along this line as well and that's within uh, this wedge. So these lines right here, these two are the wedges, uh, the wedge lines and then these two lines, the, the light blue lines, have kind of been a longer term uh, support and resistance. And again to look back you can see here bouncing off of this finding resistance here, support here, and then is immediately plumbing through that all the way down basically to the, the bottom version of this uh, broadening wedge right here. See the light, the light blue line here. I hope that the video, let me just make sure. Yeah, okay, it's not in the way or anything. It should be pretty easy to see um, for you guys. But here's the top of it, here's the bottom. You see it kind of bounced up here. And again, when it, when it fell, when it failed right here, you can see it tested it for multiple hours over 12 hours here, completely broke through, and then found support, not only on the 200 moving average right here, the white line, but also that's exactly where the bottom of this uh, larger wedge is here. So these are kind of the outer lines of the wedge, and these are kind of the uh, inner lines. However, so this right here is the broadening descending wedge. This is more of just a, a ascending broadening wedge, this giant pattern here. So that's more on a bigger scale there. So that that looks more clear on the daily here. Now again, I don't think we're gonna like bounce around necessarily in here. That would be a very bullish scenario, but let me just pull this up. I don't necessarily think we're gonna bounce around in here all the way up to 100,000 US dollars. It's possible. I do think a correction would be more, um, make more sense. But again, even if we did re revisit the bottom of this, 10,000, uh, and even a little below down to the 50 moving average, 9,300 9, wouldn't invalidate this pattern. It would still be okay. This would still be good. If we found support even at the 50 day moving average right here, this thick uh, lighter blue line that I'm moving my mouse around right here. Let me make sure that my mouse is, okay, it's getting picked up on OBS. So that would still be okay. Even breaking below 95 could still keep this intact and could still be bullish. So that's the pattern I have on the daily there. So this is kind of the ascending broadening wedge type uh, structure here. And that's more for a bigger time frame. But again, on the smaller time frame here, and kind of what's been going on the last few days is, and I hope you guys can see this. Um, I don't really want to move the, make these lines any bigger. This line right here that my mouse is hovering over, and then this line right here. So that's kind of what Bitcoin has been trading in as of the last uh, week and a half. So the 27th, that's uh, actually only eight days. So for the last eight days. Now, I'm curious what you guys think. Make sure to leave a comment below. Um, if you're new to the channel, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, turn on post notifications, follow me on Twitter, all that stuff. But 
Yo, what do you think about this sentiment? I noticed a lot less videos of people that I follow have been posted. There have been less less talks and less views in general. Seems kind of weird interest right now, and I think that's just due to uncertainty. People aren't sure of what's going to happen in the short term. I think this is a very decisive moment in terms of, are we gonna continue this macro trend? This macro trend that we have been in for a, well, actually, we can zoom out even, let's go to the weekly because it's more of a very, yeah, that's perfect. So this macro trend began on, in the beginning of April. So are we gonna continue this trend? Or are we going to get our first real pullback and I think, I think it's a little quiet because a lot of people are starting to think we are probably gonna get a nice pullback. But again, I'm 50-50. I'm very along the lines of, I think it would have made sense to get a pullback or it will make sense. But at the same time, I think it also made sense maybe a month ago and we never got it. So if this thing continues to go parabolic, I would also not be surprised. And in fact, I'm kind of just expecting that more. Even though I would love a pullback and I think that would make more sense, I don't think necessarily that's what we're gonna get. These markets don't have to make sense. That's kind of the key there. Um, so again, I guess to rephrase that or say that again, to me, I think it would make sense to get a pullback, but I don't think we're going to get a pullback because uh, just based on the momentum of the market, this is the macro trend, the macro trend is up. Uh, this is a weekly candle and just because it closed red here doesn't mean we're gonna, not gonna continue to go up. We saw what happened with previous weekly candles, red here, then the next few weeks up, red here, next few weeks on up. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw continued upside. So that's gonna be it for this video, guys. If you're new, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, turn on post notifications, all the good stuff, and I will see you in the next video.